You're watching EVH and Gear TV, brought to you by Stewart Travel Guitars. See the incredible stowaway travel guitar at stewartguitars.com. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. And official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com. Here's your host from Ontario, Canada, EVH artist Eric Broadbent. Hey everybody, happy Tuesday to you all. Welcome to EVH and Gear TV. We are live for a very brief live product unboxing. I was looking forward to this one for a little bit. And also as a reminder that we are live tonight over on our second show, our third show, Camera Corner. I forget which order those came in <laughs> in, the, in the line of when we uh, kind of originated those shows. Camera Corner is live tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and 6 p.m. Pacific. I've got a really cool young lad on the show tonight. His name is Tyler Morris. He's a Gibson slash Kramer slash Epiphone artist. He's kind of making a big name for himself in the scene, well respected by the whole Gibson umbrella, uh, not just to mention Kramer and things like that as well too. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. So this is kind of a funny story on this um, on this uh, unboxing here. So I was expecting two shipments from two different people, and um, I won't say who this one's from. Actually, you can probably see a sticker back there already, but it doesn't matter. You won't know what's 100% inside there. And from this company, and I was also expecting a, a, ship, a shipment that Gary Kramer was shipping me. And then Gary Kramer actually texted me today and said, did you get my wine that I sent you yet? And I replied back and I said, no, not, not as of yet. And the funny thing is, I thought maybe the, uh, there was a bit of a, a problem with this shipment. I have no idea what it was, but um, I, I got a notification from UPS saying that there was an irregularity at the border and it had contained hazardous goods, whatever. And, it re and the, I was following a tracking number for this box here, and it said it was sent back to the manufacturer or to the sender or whatever. I'm like, well, that's crazy. So I just assumed that it was from Gary Kramer because he's shipping me wine. And those of you that know the whole story, I had trouble bringing wine across the border the first time when I, when I flew back from Los Angeles. So I just, I just assumed. I assumed incorrectly that it was coming from Gary. It wasn't, and I even told Gary Holt, who was in the chat as well too, I'll say hi to everybody here in a second. I told Gary um, when uh, we were watching uh, Sandra Lee's live stream the other day, and I said, hey Gary, guess what? My shipment from Gary Kramer got returned back. And he's like, oh really, really, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, bummer. Meanwhile, it wasn't, it was from this manufacturer. So I still haven't found out why this one was returned. Uh, it certainly um, doesn't contain hazardous material. We'll figure that out maybe another day. So uh, long story short, there's still a package coming from Gary Kramer. Looking forward to having some of that beautiful wine here in the house. Not that I'm a wine drinker, but it's gonna be nice to have a little, little toast in maybe one of the shows. So this one here, as you can see, is a package, unless it's another manufacturer, it is from line six, as far as what the box says. And I've kind of conveniently turned the box the opposite away from the camera, so you don't see the, the, uh, <laughs> the name on the box, because that would really spoil the uh, unboxing pretty quickly but yeah we do have a new axe so let's say hi to everybody real quickly here and i want to thank everybody for for tuning in this is great to have you here it's been a crazy day today i've been working since the moment i got like i mean i was up a little earlier than normal today well maybe about an hour later than normal this uh daylight savings time has messed me up a little bit and some days I, I enjoy it other days i don't but uh i've been working around the clock trying to wrap up a project and on top of that I was about 11 episodes behind on our iTunes podcast, so I stayed up really, really late last night getting all those done. So I put all those up on iTunes today. There's a bunch of good ones, including the recent one with Vernon Reed. I've got some stuff there from our Helix community with uh, Johnny Lee and Chad Husky. I've got uh, the whole Kramer series with Gary Kramer, Dennis Berardi, and Henry Vaccaro Sr. Uh, oh man, there's, there's John Brown from Monuments. There's a bunch of stuff. So just go to iTunes, type in EVH gear, and you'll see our podcast and subscribe. That would be awesome. So I'm just I'm trying to catch up. If I if I didn't think the um, there was a you know, if there was only a couple people listening to those podcasts, I would just say you know what, I, guys, I just can't do it. I, I can't do all of this stuff. But there's more than just a couple people. I'm getting a lot of people message me, dude, you're behind in your podcast. You're gonna update them. You're gonna update them. I'm like, you know, now that I know that, and I get the statistics. There's a lot of people actually listening to those on on the go. So it's worthy of my time for sure 
to be able to uh, commit to that. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more religious and, and get them up there. And another thing that's kind of funny, I've got two mixers. Like this one here, the Rode one, I did a demo on the other day, and I've got my um, Personas one, which I'm, I'm speaking through right now. Both of them have beautiful SD recording on, on board. And the quality is much better if I record my shows to the uh, SD card and then do a little minor editing in, in um, Adobe Audition and then send them up to iTunes as opposed to bring them down from YouTube after the show's over doing some editing. Because once my shows are up on YouTube, I bring them back down. It's like, okay, first of all, they're compressed going up. They're getting you know compressed again coming back down. I'm extracting them. I'm modifying the file. So it's almost like it becomes, I don't want to use the word garbage, but it becomes very garbled and the audio quality becomes less. But I could easily hit record. Each night I do these shows. I'm going to try this tonight when I go live with Tyler. I've done it a couple times. But I'm going to hit record before I go live and record that. So now I'm going to have an original copy of my shows before I, and it gives me a really good quality piece of work to work with and editing to put up to iTunes. But sadly, it's the last thing I think about because if one of these days I'm going to do another behind the scenes video. Right now I have five screens um, going at the same time. Five, five screens that I'm watching, one for train wrecks, one for any hiccups, one for internet problems. One for chat, one for text messages from, from Nocturnals because she's my producer. She monitors everything we do here. She's giving me cues, all that kind of stuff. It's just absolutely nuts. Um, so I, I always forget. That's the last thing I do. And then when I'm halfway through a show or, you know, at the end of a show, I'm, I'm looking over and there's no record light on the mixer. And I'm like, oh, man. You know what I mean? So I could be really be making those things better. And sometimes I even get so distracted. Now, because I've been doing this for three years, I'm getting better. Certainly not great, but I'm getting better. One day I even forgot to go live on YouTube. So I'm, hitting her, I'm sitting there talking with Jennifer Batten. It's the first time she came on the show. And I didn't even hit, like, start to broadcast. I was talking to her for, like, 20 minutes. And then I was like, I looked over at YouTube on my PC. I'm on Mac in front of here, and i got a couple PCs over here. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't, even hit, I didn't start to broadcast. So there's... There's a lot that goes into these things. It's not, it's not just like going live and, and making them happen. Uh, another thing, too, just before I jump into this as well, too, um, because I mentioned uh, Nocturnal Butterflies uh, stream, so if you see her name in the chat, which you will, click on her name and check out her channel. Uh, she's got some really, really cool things going on over there. She She's usually live with Leanne. Um, she's a single coil lover, you know, uh, wife of the former um, humbucker lover who we miss dearly. But they have a really fun kind of, uh, a, kind of a ladies' chat. And uh, that even includes Quentin James a lot of times as the, as the as the male in the mix um, or a reasonable facsimile. Sorry, to Quentin, I'm just joking. Um, but it's actually really really funny, really really funny. And as some people kind of uh, kind of give a uh, an overview or a theme of their show, it's like listening to the old-fashioned party lines. You pick up a party line and you listen and you hear two little ladies talking. That's what it's without those guys. So it's it's a lot of fun. So check that out. So I'm going to say hi to everybody here in a moment as well, too. But before we do that, let's jump out of the box and see what we got. How does that sound, everybody? All right. So let's jump in and have a quick quick peek. And this box is like three quarters open. It may look like I've opened this one, but I haven't. I do know what's in it, but I haven't opened it. it came, I'm surprised that the, the lid was still on the box because it's only held by one piece of tape. resting up against my EVH stool there. So let's have a quick look. So thank you everybody for jumping in. I'll say hi to everybody as soon as uh, we open this up. I'll get rid of my stool now. won't show you what's in these boxes because that'll give it away. Oh, that's not good. Oh, no. And you probably just got an underwear shot on that one as well, too. All right, so obviously it comes with a nice gig bag. I almost knocked down another guitar in the process of doing that. Very nice gig bag. All right, we're getting there. Ooh, we're getting there. All right, there it is. Okay, we'll actually show what it is. It's 
Ta-da. Line six, Variax Shuriken. What do you think of that? Matte black finish. There you go. Beauty freaking guitar. Actually, the identical one that Eric Jr. has. So there we go. Check that out. Comes with the Dario uh, XL strings. I think they're the 10 through whatever. And has the uh, Graph Tech uh, uh, Tusk Nut as well too. So it improves uh, stability for tuning. Now I may plug this one in in a second and I'll tune it up. I won't be able to use it in Variax mode because unfortunately, and if unfortunately and fortunately, this is a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing is Eric Jr. has my VDI Variax cable upstairs. The good thing is Eric has my VDI Variax cable upstairs. He's playing, uh, before he even got his Variax about for his birthday there on Saturday, um, he was borrowing mine, which I think you might be able to see. It's buried right there. That's what I almost knocked over. That's my Variax JTV89F with the Floyd on it. He's borrowing that every day. Dak, can I borrow your Variax? Dak, can I borrow your Variax? It was like, you know what? It's simpler to get you a Variax. So he's got the Variax and the Helix up in his room, but unfortunately he has my cable. So it feels pretty good out of the box. Well, we're close to being in tune. Uh, almost. I can tune that. That's not a problem. It's a little cold. It's been in the house for probably about uh, two and a half, three hours. So it's kind of climatized a little bit to the uh, the room here. And it's not freezing cold out in Canada today. So, I mean, in our part of Canada, I should say. I'm sure the weather um, changes, obviously, across the country. But here it's not too bad. So I don't feel too bad about opening it up in this temperature. It doesn't even feel overly cold to the, uh, to the fingers here. So what I will do is, uh, this is one of the things I always say. I always have my, my um, Relay G10 wireless plugged into my helix rack which is right back there that's my main helix so and i that's just nice i plug in i'm ready to go and my helix controls right down at my feet so i'll tune it up now my wireless is flashing red so i think i'm about to die soon so we'll try to get through that as quickly as possible it, we're actually almost in tune so that's heck it's not bad at all all right You know what? My wireless might be dead. I think it could be. I know it was dying the other day. Yeah, she's almost dead. It's flashing red. So I won't be able to play it right now. I'll get this thing charged up and I'll try to do a little bit of a live demo before uh, before I go live tonight. But as you can see, I had a beautiful, beautiful uh, satin finish on it. I'll try to show the back of it again. Your battery compartment right, right there. Take this typical NP style battery, see if I can lift it up. Anybody that knows Variax just know what I'm talking about. Okay, the battery compartment. I never use the batteries anyways. I use the VDI cable, which will power the, the Variax. But it's got all kinds of baritone modes and all kinds of stuff on it as well too. Volume tone, uh, tuning, and various instruments. And I love the uh, uh, the pattern on the right-hand side of the fretboard. I think that's very, very cool. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Kramer Night Swan a little bit. Very cool as well too. It just feels awesome to the hand, like a satin finish all the way throughout. Uh, locking tuners as well too if you can see those very very nice and I believe Korean manufactured I'm pretty sure yep manufactured in Korea so very nice I love the headstock on it reverse headstock it's the first reverse headstock I've had in some time I haven't had one for a long time and that, that <laughs> it's so funny because for a lot of you it's probably common nature but it took me a while to get used to that again too you know tuning juniors and I was actually just playing juniors earlier today before this one come in so I'm looking forward to this. This is going to give me a new kind of a, you know, it's a hardtail, which is kind of cool. I only have a couple hardtails. And it's going to give me a, a bit, especially with the, the, I mean, it's with any Variax, I'm used to the technology already. I love that and I use it a lot. But I, I think this one's going to probably inspire a little bit more metal stuff from me. And of course, most of you that know that I'm stuck in the 80s, I think this is going to be totally right up my alley. But right, just feeling it right now out of the box, it feels really good. It feels very comforting, very inviting. I'm probably going to bring the action down just to hear. It's certainly not bad whatsoever. I mean, most of you would probably think it's right in your alley. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. I am going to keep the 10 gauge strings on it as far as as far as I know. I've done that with my JTV89F, even though I'm a 9 to 42 guy. Um, I It's my personal belief. I don't think there's any data that will back this up as far as, uh, you know, with line 6. But I do, I'm of the belief that the thicker strings, the slightly thicker gauge strings will help the... Uh, tracking of the basically of the computer system that's built into these things I think it helps it a little bit better I'd like to be proven wrong by that if that if I'm wrong on that I would I'd be I will rejoice that I'm wrong 
because I would love to go down to nines if I could. Uh, I'll talk to I'll talk to the team. I'll talk to Andrew Bonica at uh, Line Six, who is um, you know he's basically the product owner of Variax at Line Six, and I don't I don't know if I've ever asked him that. I think we did talk about pickups and things like that, but I don't know if we actually discussed the string gauge and how that may affect uh, the technology inside. But it's certainly not too bad. I do like it because when I'm playing tens, I go to one of my other guitars that are all my other guitars. Um, there are nines, and I, I just like bend the crap out of the strings. But if, if for tuning stability and for recording, uh, tens are certainly a nice thing as well too. So as you can see, I think it kind of suits me. I know it definitely suits Junior. It totally suits him. So now we're gonna have to label these things because you know what's gonna happen. He's gonna get a scuff on his, and, and he's gonna say, "No, that's my guitar." He's he's gonna claim the one that's in better shape. So we're gonna have to either mark it down our serial numbers. Or uh, we're gonna put a one and a two on our guitars because they're identical, absolutely 100% identical. So I try to give you another kind of visual again there. Watch me scuff it right now, then I'll go up and I'll grab his and I'll say, no, that's mine. So let's go over and say hi to the people in chat. I will plug this thing in uh, shortly here tonight too. I'll get, um, I'll either get Junior's my Variax cable upstairs, or I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get my uh, wireless charged and we'll do some stuff there as well too. Or even put a battery in here. I could do that as well too. All right, let's go and say hi to everybody in the chat. Gary Holt, as I mentioned, Vinny5150. Kai Down is here, my beautiful nocturnal butterfly. Brian Cote, great stream the other night, buddy. Last night, Will Varela, Todd Graff, Stephen Hurd. Nice to see you, buddy. So glad we met through the Kramer uh, kind of circle. Uh, Kai Down, A-S-D, A-Z-A-D-H. we got to get you a, a, a simpler name. I can't read that. Um, and good question. Will Varela is asking the price range on those. I will get you that. See, I, I'm in Canada here, so the prices are considerably higher here in Canada. Um, I will double check that in just a second. Uh, let me see here, Kai Down, I think I might have mentioned him. And uh, let me see here, Chris Link is here, Todd Graff, Zach Thong is here, JJ's House of Jams, hey buddy, nice to see you my friend, fellow Helix and Line 6 aficionado. Let me see here, uh, Guitar Hack is here, hey buddy, good to see you man, you've been really cranking out the great streams lately. Good premiere last night. That was really nice. We got to watch some of his people. Go check out uh, Guitar Hacks channel. He did a premiere last night with his band. He's got a really cool, cool new guitar too, as well too. A Gibson Firebird. He's been really proud of it. He's a Les Paul guy, and uh, this was kind of a new, completely different left field approach for him with this guitar. And he did. Uh, looks like it was done in a recording studio or a rehearsal studio, and about five to ten different songs with the band. Really amazing. Everything from like Duran Duran to Foo Fighters to. Uh, Oh, I, I forget. It's a bunch of other great songs as well, too. Did a really good job. It's worthwhile checking out. Uh, Gary Holt, yeah, it's safer to me to drive and revisit the shows on the podcast because when I revisit YouTube, I want to keep glancing at my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audio is the best way to go when you're in, when you're mobile, for sure. You don't want to be watching at the phone when you're driving. Uh, let me see here. Uh, FNF Gamers is here as well, too. Um, what's the mic? What's with the mic sound? Is there a problem with the audio? It shouldn't be. Hopefully not. Um, I'm hoping it's all good. Could be when I was facing away, and then again too. Maybe I maybe I have too many mics. Maybe that could be the problem. <laughs> um, uh, Dave Dave R's guitars. Nathan Murphy is here. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, and Brian Cote says I love Nocturnal's live show. I I like it as well too. Christmas in March says Dale Palmer. Yes, it is for sure. Todd Graff says very excess indeed it is. Uh, and Gary says, Nocturnal Show is my drive to work entertainment. I even turn off Howard Stern. Wow, that's a compliment. There you go. Would you look at that, Nocturnal? Um, let me see here. And this is, this, this is nice to actually sit down and do this with you guys and girls because this is the first time I've had a chance to just unwind. I've been working on websites all day trying to wrap up a project for tomorrow. And uh, there's just not enough hours in the day. Uh, let me see here. Brian Cote mentioned Brian. Um... Uh, Trolls Jamie or something like that. Sweet. Uh, looks pretty cool. Thank you very, very much. Jeremy Dunn is here. Very nice. Uh, let me see. Scroll down. Poo Ninja is here. Rob's EVH Guitars. Hey, man. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for stopping by. And Rob, you got to check out Rob's stuff as well, too, if you're into EVH Guitars, as uh, many, many, many of you are if you're here. Uh, it's definitely worth your, your stop by his channel as well, too. Robert Apple is here. Congratulations, Eric. You're going to love Variax. Indeed. And I'm not in, I'm not, it's, Variax isn't my first rodeo. I've got the JTV89F, and uh, but this is going to be cool. It can be a hardtail version, which is going to be very, very cool. Um, I'm loving that already. Um, oh, no, no, Stephen Hurd. He says, thinking about selling my 89 Kramer sustainer to get something from the new Kramer line. Dude, give me first dibs of that later on. Um, the, the, there's some cool stuff out there, but give me first dibs on that when you do. Um, we'll talk. We'll talk. 
that's how we met. We, we, he uh, picked up a, a brand new old stock in 1989 Kramer sustainer, um, like for a very, very good price. It was like basically like finding an old 57 Chevy locked away in a barn. It was like this with this guitar. Maybe not as collectible, but still for us guitar players, it's it's pretty damn cool. So let's talk about that one, Stephen. Uh, continue down, continue down. I just want to see if I miss anybody else. Okay, I think I saw Sonia's here as well too. Thank you, Sonia, Sony for jumping in. Brad Miller's here. Uh, Absolute mayhem. Very, very nice. This is great. And uh, let me see. Let's look up those. Okay, let me see. Let's look up those prices. I'm going to open up another tab here for a second. And I really would, wish I would have brought my other guitar stand in here today. Let's do this. I'm going to try to very carefully put this down. I have carpet down below my feet here so I can safely rest it. All right, we're good for a second. And I will look up. Um, I'll look. I'll go. I'll get you an American price. I'll go to Sweetwater. And now the fin the prices on the Variax will change or will range accordingly with the finishes. This one's the flat flat black matte, whatever they want to call it. Okay, so let's just type in Variax Shuriken. And someone may have already <laughs> mentioned this in the chat, but I'm gonna look it up for you anyways. All right, so. Uh, and they also have it in the baritone model. They had the baritone model first, and I'm not a real baritone guy. I, I don't like the long scale, super long scale, and I'm not really a genter, but, you know. I'm not a gentleman, uh, so I wanted to go with the shorter scale, so that's what this one is. All right, satin black, you're looking at uh, $14.99 US. So $14.99 US on this one. Obviously Canadian, if you're like doing your long McQuaid's or things like that you know, considerably more. I think 90, well, I don't want to say 90% of our audience is, is American, but a large portion of our audience is uh, is American. I'm going to look up Long and McQuaid just for curiosity. Sometimes I'm scared to look up Canadian prices. Let me see here. I'll type in Variax. Actually, I'll type in Shuriken. And speaking of Shuriken too, I should have, um, I'm hoping very, very soon, I might have to make a special a special night for it or a special time for it, but I'm hoping to have Stefik McKay, uh, you know, basically the, one of the guys who pioneered this guitar. He is the person that pioneered it. I want to have him on the Helix Hour as well too. So premium colors in the Variax Shurikens are about $19.99. Um, you know what? Hang on. Baritone Guitar Ebony. And... Standard scale model. Okay, here we go. I'm looking it up right now. Twenty ninety nine Canadian for this one right here. So it's it's obviously considerably more. And what did I say it was at Sweetwater? Wasn't it fourteen ninety nine? Something like that, US. Let's see if I can go back again. I'll just have to rewind the video. So that that's the uh, gist on that one, I think. Let's have a look. Where do they go? Go back one more. It is yeah, fourteen ninety nine US or twenty ninety nine Canadian. So so watch for some demos on this one. I can't wait. I'm gonna. I think I got uh, paper on the pickup, so the plastic will take that off. I don't know if we took it off of Juniors yet. I bet you we didn't. I'm meticulous about that. I never leave plastic on my stuff, never, because that stuff will bake itself on there after a while. Let's see if I can do this without. I've got a long thumbnail which I should not have. I don't want to scratch it either, and I should also not be doing this one-handed. So maybe we'll. Oh, we got. We got it. We got it. Let's let's complete it. I'm surprised I'm doing this. This is not a one-handed job. Oh, that could be used out of context. <laughs> I'm making things difficult for myself. There we go. Plastic is off. Look all that it looks matte finish on the pickup. I think Junior must have taken his off. I don't remember seeing the plastic on his. He must. He must have done it. Knowing him, he did the minute he got it. Okay, so I lost my chat, so let's minimize this screen. Oh, we're back to chat. And, okay, so I'll post a link in the chat. Okay, I can do that. Let's do that. Nocturnal's texting me saying, post a link in the chat. I will do that right now because I still have it. Give me one second. Okay. Oh, man, too many screens. Okay, so... Okay, this is going to be the directly to it from, uh, from Sweetwater, okay? And how about we just do that? I'll just post Sweetwater, and then as as I mentioned to you earlier, you can go to Long McQuaid as well too for the Canadian fellows. Sweetwater.com store detail. Oh, there you go. So you have it. Um, and All Star Promo says, does it have a bucket head style kill switch? No, it doesn't have a kill switch on it. Um, but I wouldn't imagine. I wouldn't be surprised if we were to toggle some special things with uh, with Helix, maybe by because you can do so many different things. You can lock certain things. You can lock this pickup selector. You can lock tone knobs so things don't get changed, whatever. 
you might be able to assign like a zero output, maybe like second position or something like that. So you could do a toggle that way. Uh, I've never done that, but you could do it. Um, you know, or you could actually mount one if you wanted as well to install one. I, I'm not going to do that on a guitar like this. Um, and yes, I'm just getting a text message too about that very same question. So yes, uh, Sonia says beautiful looking guitar. Yeah, plain and simple, right? Really, I mean, it's it's really really plain, dark, evil looking, and I think that's going to be awesome. I, I that's what I'm look that's what I was going for. I don't have a guitar of this nature. I've got some glossy black guitars. I don't have a matte finish. Um, black so that i like that a lot one of the things too i like about matte finish just be kind of comparable to the evh stealth guitar if, if people are familiar with that one the stealth has more of like a chalkboardy type of a matte finish but what i will do in a case like this i'm assuming right now just you know if you get any fingerprints on it like i'm getting some sweat or some some oils i'm just going to use a typical polish cloth with no polish uh, on a matte guitar that's what that's what i would do and uh, you know you can always comment later as well too what you guys or girls like to do on a matte finish guitar but I'm not going to use polish on this I'm just going to use a, a just the microfiber cloth that may have some polish uh, uh, residue from using it on other guitars but I won't actually apply any physical polish to it and I think that will probably uh, uh, suffice for sure and look who pops in at the very bottom of the chat Mr. Frank Rashot. Thank you, sir, for joining us. I appreciate that greatly. Uh, this thing arrived safe and sound today. No problems, no no zero issues with it. Never did figure out why it got returned <laughs> to you guys, uh, unless you're trying to slip some wine in the package or something like that uh, <laughs> across the border. Uh, maybe Gary Kramer was trying to tuck in that wine that got uh, um, <laughs> confiscated at TSA. So later on tonight, I've got to kind of hustle because we've got an 8 o'clock, sorry, 9 o'clock show tonight over on Kramer Corner. I want to get this baby... Um, tuned up and i'm gonna go try to steal my vdi cable from junior and say look dude i'm sorry it's new guitar day for me so i'm borrowing my cable back we'll have to get a second one here in the house so we can each have one at the same time but uh thank you frank you uh, you are awesome for tuning in all the time and uh, i i can't uh, i can't thank you enough and speaking of frank in line six we had a really good show the other day on the helix hour on sunday uh, vernon reed from living color stopped by and i know frank's a big fan of vernon i'm a big fan of vernon many of you in the chat are big fans of vernon and that was literally about a year in the in the works to get him on the show. Uh, scheduling, scheduling, scheduling. It just did not work out. He was originally forecasted for uh, EVH and Gear TV on Friday nights. And because those Fridays, you know, as a working musician, you know, Friday's a prime night for, for gigs. And so I, I kind of contacted him again. I said, look, I think I might have an idea for you because he's a Line 6 artist as well. So... Um, he, he he could easily be brought over to the Helix Hour. And I said, look, here's an opportunity for you. I think we can find a hole in your schedule. It's a 60-minute show as opposed to a 90-minute show. And it's on a Sunday. It's in the afternoon. And it actually, the, all the planets aligned and we had him. And I, I honestly do feel that he had so much fun and he shared with me before and after uh, off the air. He had so much fun that he'll come back for sure. So now we're going to bring him back again. We're going to find a hole back again on Friday. It's going to be down the road, probably three or four or five months down the road. But we're going to bring him more to the EVH show where we can talk easily for 90 minutes and geek out over guitars. Um, more so on this a little bit like everything obscure because over on the Helix Hour, it is kind of geared towards the Line 6 family of products. And of course, we'll still dance around other subjects as well, too. We're talking about photography and video games. And all kinds of cool stuff like that as well too. So we don't always stick to the the 100% agenda, but you know it is focused on the Line Six, uh, you know, family of products, right? And there's so many as well too. We're starting now to talk more about Yamaha guitars, obviously in the same umbrella. Uh, we're talking about you know amplifiers and speakers and sound reinforcement and guitar wirelesses. It's not just the Helix family, which is how it started. But we're branching out a little bit as well too, so it's been good. It's been a lot of um, it's been a lot of fun. Let me see another question about the uh, uh, is it a baritone scale? That's from All Star Promos. No, this one is not the baritone scale. They do have it in baritone, and that was the one that came out first, I believe. Frank could confirm that, but uh, I believe uh, the baritone came first, and then they brought these ones out after. And I'm not a baritone guy. Um, I had I had an option to get this in baritone if I wanted, but no, I, I just it doesn't suit me. It really doesn't. I'm I'm more of this the scale guitar player, and uh, I'm gonna definitely put it to some good use. I've already seen what Junior can do with it, and uh, he was having some fun the other day. He was playing like he learned he learned how to play Enter Sandman backwards, which is not as easy as what you think. I mean, Metallica stuff is for the most part relatively simpler to learn. He learned how to play Enter Sandman backwards, put it in through his Helix, and then looped it. And then with Helix, you can reverse or double speed or half speed your, your phrasing that you do. He reversed it, and it sounded 100% perfect. 
I was like trying to mention to Vernon Reed on the air yeah, uh, Sunday. I said, you know, it's like I'm sure we've all done this. I know I've done it. Some of my friends have done it. Where you record something in a microphone, you know, hello, my name is Eric. And then you reverse that and it'll, it'll speak backwards. So you listen to it and you try to remember it in your mind. And then you then you then now you try to say it backwards and as a new take. And you reverse that to see how close your English language is. Well, that's what Junior did with the audio. He learned it backwards put it into Helix, reversed it, and it sounded just like the record. I'm like, that's pretty awesome. I can't do that. I can sometimes have a hard enough time learning guitar parts forward, let alone backwards. But I think that's probably a good ear training uh, uh, you know, um, exercise as well, too. But very, very cool. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Chris Bevan says, don't you ever get mad. You're always laid back and cool. I get mad. And I'm not as... <laughs> I, I, I get stressed. Trust me, I do. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm told I'm a good teacher and I'm patient. I'm the least patient patient person you'll ever meet. But I'm told I'm very patient, so I'll, I'll accept that compliment. And so no problem on the questions here, all-star promos. Uh, Brad Miller says, Vernon was awesome. Thank you so very, very much. Um, let me see here. I'm, I'm missing out. Uh, Pooh Ninja says, got to uh, move the ship. Y'all have a good day. I'll catch repost. Thank you very, very much. Um, very cool. Thank you, Frank. Very, very cool. Um, <laughs> Frank posted six times, five times. That's awesome. I think maybe a keyboard stuck or something. Thank you, Robert Apple. Uh, indeed, very cool. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to go back up to see if I miss anything else. Walker family is here as well, too. Thank you so very, very much for joining in. Brian Cote, cool stuff. I think I got everybody. So listen, it is 531 here. Uh, Brian Cote, Eric, Matt, uh, never. <laughs> Yeah, there's a good thing we don't do like those um, Truman shows or whatever that's called, you know, where the video camera's following me all day. Uh, you wouldn't want to see that. And yes, Lars Guitar says, can the sure can do acoustic guitars? Yes, it can for sure. The Variax technology is, is pretty much common throughout the entire line of guitars. This one has a couple different tunings and a couple different things um, than some of the Variax models. But yes, it, anything that the other ones can do, it can do. It can do uh, everything from like big old Martin guitars and beautiful acoustic resonators. Uh, banjos, uh, sitars, all that kind of stuff. And when you power it with Helix, it's even cooler because now uh, and you could have a preset and let's say in four or five different snapshots that you may have, I could go from a metal genting guitar on snapshot one to you know a similar, a similar tone, but in the next snapshot, go right to a banjo or sitar. It's just absolutely crazy. And on top of that too, I could, I could we could have tuning changes. I could tune it down to like a drop B, and, a, and a, you know, if you would, if someone would want to do that in a song, all of a sudden you're playing, all of a sudden you tu change your complete tuning. Just, I mean, you can. Whatever. The only limitation with these things are your imagination. So that's that's pretty much the only real limit to these things. Uh, Lars says I have the 89F. I love that guitar. It, it can't see it right now, but it's on the stand right back there. It's buried by microphones right now. Um, it's a little bit in the dark, but that is I play that guitar pretty much every single day. Uh, Antonio Ivanov is here. It's very nice to see you. David Ennis, I'm not sure if I mentioned you. Thank you for joining. And Will says, I'm old school. I don't have a kill switch on any of my guitars. What's the reason for a kill switch? Thanks. I, I don't like kill switches. I, I, I know that's going to upset some, some of my f friends that sell kill switches and things like that. They're not for me. I have one in one of my Wolfgangs. Um, a kill switch is a fancy way, um, you know, with basically like a lot of guys in the 70s, and you know 80s and even today like ace really was known for that a lot uh, but there's a million other bands too so if you got uh, two volumes and two tones on your guitar and you've got a toggle switch so you could turn off your humbucker and your neck on the guitar turn the volume off and when you switch up to the neck position it shuts the guitar off so you know like you know toggle 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 and you know get that stutter effect right well then all of a sudden kill switches become very very popular and Eddie Van Halen, I'm not going to say Eddie Van Halen was the pioneer of kill switches, but Eddie Van Halen made them also very popular again on his, uh, uh, well, you remember, you really got me, right? He did the solo and you really got me, and he's using the old guitar and he's doing the toggle on that, and that's what gave that stutter effect. Well, he can't do that anymore with his other guitars, so he had, uh, you know, either he did it or his guitar tech, you know, installed a kill switch on his guitar and his Wolfgang, the signature one, and now you can buy that one with it built in, and it's like the big arcade style kill switch was somewhere up around here, you know, like you, you tap that at a spot right there where the kill switch is, and it would stutter. I've got one in my Wolfgang, and because I don't use it hardly ever, you know, like anything you don't use, you'll get some corrosion and some, you know, like the, the I don't want to say, the, the contacts aren't being um, 
executed or, or moved any kind of friction, so they they get dirty. And uh, when I go to use the kill switch, it'll it'll uh, it'll make crackly noises and stuff like that. So I don't even ever use it. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to bypass it. it. Just doesn't serve me any real real thing. It was a novelty for me at first. So very long answer on the kill switch. So there you go. But I imagine you could probably do it on here with. Like I say, assigning a volume block, you know, to a spot, whatever, uh, maybe a second position on toggle, and then flick up to that if you wanted to. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't use it very much, anyways. So let me see here. Uh, Tom Morello using pedal board, including the wah pedal. Okay, cool. And and uh, um, what was that saying? Ace Frilly. Uh, he says uh, guitar hex is Ace Frilly permanently uh, diabled neck pickup. I'm not sure. Or dis oh, disabled. Yes, he permanently disabled the neck pickup. And obviously on one of his guitars wasn't the neck pickup. Like the ca the cavity was just for the uh, smoke bombs, right? But uh, yeah, so All Star Promos says thank you. And uh, Walker Family says still here just listening. No problem. All right, I don't want to keep you guys any longer, guys and girls, because I mean an unboxing that goes longer than 30 minutes is probably going to get boring for you. So stay tuned to all of our channels. Lots of good things coming. Um, as I mentioned, tonight on the Kramer Corner, it's 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, we've got Tyler Morris, Gibson slash Kramer slash Epiphone artist, and he's, I mean, he's really making a name for himself. He's very young. I don't even know his full age. I'm going to guess around 17 or 18 at the most. Uh, he's met and been interviewed by J.C. Curley, the new uh, CEO at uh, Gibson, who, who I think is an awesome dude. Um, I've met the man but never spoke to him. I just met him in passing, and I, I was too kind of fanboyed out or too starstruck to actually reach my hand out. I actually had my hand out to shake his hand, and I went, Oop, and I, I, I got too nervous, and I walked on by him, and, I, and that never happens. So he's a cool dude. He interviewed and did an interview with Tyler. So uh, there's a lot of respect from Gibson for this young lad. Um, working on EVH uh, and Gear TV as well, too, for Friday. More great guests coming up on Helix Hour, and then the following week, on uh, Rocking Dead, we're bringing that one back a little bit. I've been when you do f three, four shows, someone, all, one of them, always has to suffer a little bit. For a while there, Kramer Corner was suffering. I wasn't, I, you know, I just wasn't putting my 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 all into it. I'll just, I'll just say that I wasn't putting my all into it, and I promised I was going to do that. And I think I, I I more than did that when we got the interviews with uh, the founding fathers of Kramer Guitars. Uh, Dennis, Gary, and Henry Vaccaro. And there's a couple surprises coming with the Founding Fathers as well, too. There's going to be some really, really cool things possibly coming here very, very soon. A couple more people. And also, who knows, maybe one of these days in the distant future we'll have a reunion in the same room, which will be kind of crazy because some of these gentlemen haven't seen each other in, in many, many years. And uh, just booking, booking, booking. Uh, I'll look forward to the day when I have a publicist working for me, uh, <laughs> when I can actually afford to pay them uh, to do that job. Because booking guests takes it takes all my time, and I still got to do my regular job, which keeps the power on to be able to do these shows. So it's one of those treadmills, right? You're just doing these things, but labor of love, and I love it, and uh, the family loves it here, and we love it because you give us good feedback and really appreciate it as well too. So we surround ourselves with good people, and it, I think it, in the end result, it produces good content. And we're always tr striving for better. So keep sharing that feedback with us and let us know, uh, you know, what you're liking, maybe some of the things you're not liking. And, um, you know, a conversation is good. I had someone give me some feedback the other day. They weren't happy about a particular thing. And I said, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, I don't like all my content either. You know, it's <laughs> it's one of those things. And it was actually funny. He was he was somewhat negative uh, in, a, in, a, in an honest way. And we turned the conversation right around. I said, trust me, I said, like I said, at the end of the day, I don't like all my content either, but I'd learn from you guys and girls. So share share feedback with us and we'll use that to formulate. Uh, just like these, like Line 6, for example, they take suggestions from, from, from the community and that's how they end up making fantastic products. Feedback does produce results. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be all kinds of uh, sunshine. You know, there's, there can be some negative as well too. As long as constructive negative feedback I'll take it and I'll work on it and I'll work to improve. So keep keep that coming. Uh, thank you guys. Well, Nocturnal Butterfly says, uh, be sure to subscribe and smash that uh, bell. And lastly, we just kind of uh, touched base on Vernon Reed here. And since we're talking about a very accent, we're talking about Helix here in this particular live stream. Uh, Vernon, like many guests, many um, artists that come on the Helix Hour, has provided us an exclusive Helix preset to download. Uh, so it's really, really cool. Fans have loved it. I did that as an accidental feature way back I want I think it was Jeff Schroeder from the Smashing Pumpkins who we started this with. If not, it was right around that time. And uh, so it's kind of nice. People always say, oh, I'd love to be able to play on so-and-so's rig. And if they happen to be using a Helix, well, now you can. You literally can play on their rig. 
So not only did uh, Vernon give us one, not two, but three of his stage uh, presets for, you know, uh, open letter to a landlord, uh, middleman, and I forget what the other one was, but if you go back to the video, which is uh, the second last video on my channel here, you'll see Vernon's big uh, mugshot on the video. And I have a, a comment pinned at the very top and it gives the link to download. And all I've never asked this before for anyone to download. I don't usually have people jump through hoops and there's no hoops here. Just because of the sheer nature of the coolness and the exclusiveness of it, all I ask is a nice friendly thumbs up on that video. And just and if you're not a subscriber, just click on subscribe. And it's not gonna be one of those things where you're gonna subscribe and it's like, okay, did you just subscribe for nothing? Because I'm gonna work my ass off for you uh, to make it worthy of you clicking that subscribe button. I promise you this, and I've said it a million times, I, I might as well just get a little t-shirt. I Actually, I'm gonna do it. I'll put it in the broad stash boutique. I'm gonna say, I will work just as hard for you to, uh, to keep you as a subscriber as I did to get you as one. And my life motto is always be in interview mode, okay? Um, you know, I, I've kind of, I, I, it's a, that's a motto of mine. Always be like you're in interviewing mode. So you interview for a job, you're there, you're on your best behavior, you're you know doing everything you can to get that job. Some people get kind of complacent after the fact. And that's, uh, that's not the way I approach YouTube. I work very hard to get you as a subscriber and I'm very happy with where the channel is. However, there's days where it's zero subscribers that day. Some days there'll be 20, 30, 40 subscribers. There might be one or two. It's totally all over the place, right? But I look at every subscriber as ones, not tens, hundreds, or thousands. I look at them as ones, and I work for those ones. And I, I will always work for you. Never going to coast. All right. Walker says, I would love one of those guitars. Can't afford it at the moment. I have a feeling these are going to be around for a long time. They're a popular seller. So, you know, save up a few things. Maybe move, maybe have some old gear you can move that you don't play. Look around the house. You've got some stuff that you just never touched in years. You know, maybe some electronics or accessories. I always sell them off, whatever, as long as you're not going to regret it. But they'll be waiting for you when you're ready. And look at that. Uh, Nocturnal Butterfly has posted the link for the presets. Man, she's amazing. Another One of a million reasons why I love her so much. And be sure to check out her podcast as well, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, if you go to her channel, you'll you'll uh, find out more about it. And uh, Brad Miller, take, uh, take it. Line, line 6 needs to make the G10 work with the G50RE, please. Okay. Uh, and Coots13 is here. All right, so I'm gonna let everybody go. Thank you so very much. Uh, thank you, Frank, and thank you everyone at Line 6 for doing what you do and continuing to raise the bar for other manufacturers and just making it fun for music uh, musicians out there to uh, to enjoy the product. I, I mean, I do say this, I have to say, I know I'm on an EVH format right now with the EVH and Gear TV, uh, you know, I guess it's the look I'm doing, going for at the moment, uh, but, it's made me. It's made a guitar. It's made guitar playing fun for me again. For a, a, quite a while there, I um, I put down the guitar and I was doing all these talk show things and I forgot that I played guitar. Plugging into an amp and moving a, a microphone around trying to get a sound became very daunting to me and really killed the mojo the minute I got it. Mojo doesn't hit me every day or it didn't hit me every day. And when it did and the inspiration hit me, I'd come in, I'd plug in. I'm trying to record something on here and I'll, I'll just be honest, I can't get a good sound when I record. When the Helix product came into my life, uh, I have two presets. I, I meant to tell Vernon read this on Sunday. There's, there's, you know, several hundred different presets you can put on Helix. I use two, so I and I have two that I've made. So it's very, very nice. It's very nice to just go in, plug in, go, and nothing changes. The only thing that changes from from Tuesday to Wednesday for me is my attitude. If I'm in a really good mood one day and I'm in a not so good mood the next day, that's when that changes. My tone is not going to change. So the consistency is good. So I love it to death. And that reminds me, I gotta go plug in my relay and charge it up. It's, it's not, that's how much I play it. And I don't have to charge this a lot. I haven't charged it in a week. And I've been playing quite a bit. Now I'm not sure what they what it is for hours. I think it's like eight to 10 hours, maybe even more than that. And I'm not gonna, sometimes I'll play for two or three hours at a time. Sometimes I'll play for 15, 20 minutes. But I use this a lot without recharging it. So that is a nice testimony in itself. So very awesome. So just in case what people are wondering what was in this other series of boxes here, the one is the um, uh, charging system for for that's a battery pack, and the other is like the USB dongles and everything too that you can bring in to uh, Variax Workbench HD, and you can oh it's really really cool. I showed Junior that the other day too, where you can actually Chad Husky is the fellow to watch on this. Chad Husky is a Variax uh, king out there in the YouTube community, at least one of them for sure. 
and he had a real nice write-up on him as well today too. I just got to mention that. But uh, Variax Workbench lets you design a guitar. You can kind of say, I want it to be, I want it to sound like a Strat. I want to have my pickup like on a on a 45 degree angle. I want the pickup up on the neck. You can do crazy, crazy unorthodox things, or you can keep it simple. You can choose like the potting. You can choose like uh, uh, short screws, long screws on the pickups. You can choose like P90s, humbuckers, single coils. Uh, you can even choose like 500k pots, 250k pots, and then save it. And then when you're done, you upload it to your Variax. You can do all kinds of crazy tunings. So this is something very, very cool. I'm gonna share a preset very, very soon. It has Eddie's custom tuning where he's got a couple of his strings a few cents out of tune. So, uh, you know, technically, you know, that's what he would do for like songs with Running With The Devil and things like that too. If you play your guitar perfectly in E flat, it's gonna sound weird when you play it. If you use this custom tuning that Eddie does with kind of out of tune, it sounds perfect. Then again, that's also if it's in Eddie Van Halen's hands. Uh, Dale Palmer once again is asking which wireless. This is a Relay uh, G10, uh, G10S is it? Or just a G10, right? And then the, that's just a little dongle that plugs into your guitar. Also comes with a right angle adapter. Um, the only trouble I've had with this, it won't fit into my Yamaha. See this, the, the Yamaha Pacifica I have was was made long before the marriage of Yamaha and Line 6. So I, you know they weren't thinking of one another way back in that day. I can't fit either into my Pacifica because it's got, kind of got one of those Ibanez style side jacks and it's kind of like a bullet style when it, a recess. So the only way I can do that is by using um, a um, like an inline coupler. I have one on a guitar strap. So I've got like a Switchcraft inline coupler quarter inch and I plug it into that and then I got a George Ells short cable that runs out that can run to the Pacifica. But this will work with just about any style guitar out there. It will go even into, it will go into a Stratocaster style, all that kind of stuff. So they're very affordable. So long answer on that one as well to Dale Palmer. Um, and there you go. Uh, will says, I've been playing on and off for 52 years. When I don't play the guitars, actually call me mentally. I believe it. And uh, Dale Palmer says, I've been thinking about getting that one. You won't go wrong. Trust me. No tonal coloration, no uh, no discoloration or no tone loss or input loss. I love it to death. It works really good. And you know, it's funny. People would think that here in the chat, I mean, not in the chat, in the studio here, that I wouldn't need a wireless because I'm in such a small environment. I use it for one reason, one reason, two reasons. One, convenience, and two, there's been a couple times, believe it or not, they're old streams. I've probably deleted them because they're embarrassing. I got a guitar cable caught around my chair one time and I went to go back and I, I think I fell because I had a guitar cable wrapped around my chair. So I'm not gonna uh, do that again. All right, let's get out of here. 54 people watching, thanks so very, very much. You rock and I look forward to having you stop by tonight. Even if you're not a guitar player or if you're not a fan of Kramer or you're not a fan of Gibson or Epiphone, doesn't matter what you're a fan or not a fan of, come and watch a really cool young lad tonight who's carrying the torch. He's one of many, not the only one carrying the torch, but he's one of many carrying the torch for the youth of guitar. And we need more of these young, passionate, passionate, passionate uh, future rock stars. He's He's got he's got the potential. He's, he's He has it. I wouldn't ask you to come and watch for other reason. There's probably other good things to watch on YouTube as well tonight, but I think you'll probably get a really good impression from Tyler Morris. He's a great he's a great kid. Uh, R2R3 says, hey, everyone, congrats on your kind of new guitar today. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. And I know I've said I'm leaving five times. I'm officially leaving now. Watch for our information at the end of the show here. You can support the show by various means. You can pick up a shirt in the Broadstash Boutique. There is shirts for all of it, for all of our shows, all four of them. And we've also got some specialty clothing too that Nocturnal Butterfly has manufactured under the Broadstash brand. There's also our Patreon, and there's also PayPal links as well, too. And uh, I'm definitely not uh, begging for money. I just wanted to share that with you because people have asked. I've got uh, requests from different uh, mediums. Hey, how can we support the show? How can I get your music? It's all down in the description, and we certainly appreciate it. See you very, very soon. Actually, 9 o'clock tonight. Until then, cheers. Hey, you're still here? Eric Jr. here, reminding you to check out our full lineup of quality merch. Available right now in the Broadstash Boutique quality products and fast shipping. Visit broadstash.com today. I am now on Patreon. If you enjoy my content and wish to support my channel and what I do, then please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash evhgeartv. Your support assures the continued growth of this channel and a fun community in which to share our love for Van Halen, music gear, and much more. My name is Eric and I've been looking guitar. guitar. Video production services provided by Design 39 Media. Visit Design39Media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. 
Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. And official Van Halen merchandise is provided by VanHalenStore.com.